So we've come up with a configuration, a slab of space with vertical electric field and horizontal magnetic field that's moving to the side at speed v. And we're trying to see whether this is consistent with all of Maxwell's equations. We've already shown that it's consistent with Gauss's law for electricity and for magnetism, so we're halfway there. Now we need to see if it's a Faraday's law and the Ampere-Maxwell law apply. So Faraday's law tells us that if we have a loop, the integral around the loop of the electric field times the line elements, so the line integral around the loop, is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux, the magnetic flux being the surface integral of the magnetic field over an imaginary bubble film drawn over the inside of the loop, so that's b dot n dA. So can that apply here? Well, if you have a loop that's outside the plane, like a loop there or a loop there, it certainly applies because there's no electric field anywhere and no magnetic field to change anywhere. If you have a loop that's inside the slab, in that case, the line integral of the electric field is zero because the electric field at the top and bottom, the line vector goes this way and that way, whereas the electric field is upwards, so that's zero, zero. Here it's positive, there it's negative, and it adds up to zero. So that all works because also the magnetic field inside, there is a magnetic flux through here, but it's not changing. So that's all good. The real problem is going to be a loop that goes through one of the boundaries, like this green one shown here. And let's see what happens for that. So we've got our, our green loop. Let's have our boundary here. We've got our green loop. And on this side, we have an electric field going up in this direction and a magnetic field coming out of the screen. And on this side, we have nothing. Now, can Faraday's law apply here? Well, the first thing to ask is, is, the mag is there a magnetic flux through the loop? There is. And is it changing? And the answer is, if this magnetic slab was just sitting stationary, it would not be changing. There'd be a flux from this part and no flux flux from this part, no flux from that part, and so no change. But what's actually happening is that the boundary is moving sideways at speed v, which means the boundary is moving, which means in any given second, some more magnetic flux is included within our loop, because the magnetic field has to appear here. If you had a loop on the other side, it would be losing stuff in a similar way. OK, so what we've got is there is a magnetic flux that's increasing. How much is it increasing? Well, in time delta t, this moves the distance v delta t. If we call the height of the loop h, then that means the flux increases. So the change in the flux is equal to magnetic field times the area, which is h v delta t. So what we get is that the rate of change of the flux, d phi by dt, is just going to be equal to the magnetic field times h times the velocity. That's the extra magnetic flux that's going to be coming through this region in any given unit time. Now, which direction will this generate an electric field? Well, the magnetic flux is coming out of the screen. It's getting bigger. So the change of magnetic flux is also out of the screen, pointing upwards. So minus it is pointing inwards. Minus d phi by dt is pointing inwards. So from the right-hand rule, stick your thumb down. That gives a curl in this direction. So it's going to generate a net electric field that goes somehow in a line integral around that way. Do we actually have such an electric field? Well, what's the line integral around here? The line integral at the bottom is zero because the electric field is at right angles to the length element. Similarly, at the top, on the outside side, the line integral is zero because there's no electric field. So the only part of the loop where there's a non-zero line integral is this bit over here. If we're going this way around, that means we're going this way up here, which is the same direction as the electric field. So the line integral, e dot, dot dl, is just going to be E times H. So what we find is that electric field times H 
equals the magnetic field times h times v. The h's cancel, so we find that the electric field equals v, the velocity, times the magnetic field, which is very interesting. What that's telling us is if the velocity is zero, you can't have an electric field there. You need our slab to be moving in order to have more magnetic flux appearing within the loop and therefore generate an electric field inside. But as long as it is moving, you, you can have an electric field as long as it's equal to the velocity times the magnetic field.